less soul, more punk. Singer Karim Bailey Ray tells us how a life-changing encounter with a wealth of black history at a Chicago archive inspired her new album and much more. Welcome back. It's more than 17 years since singer Corinne Bailey Ray shot to prominence with her number one debut album. Her latest offering, called Black Rainbows, is much more than just a collection of tracks. Accompanied by a book, lectures, exhibitions and performances, it's a body of work inspired by a powerful encounter with an archive of black art curated by US artist Theaster Gates. Corinne Bailey Ray came into the studio here in Leeds to tell me how it all came about. Well, the album came about really naturally. I was on tour in Chicago. I went to visit this building called the Stony Island Arts Bank. And it's this old bank, it's 100 years old, in this really underserved community in Southside Chicago. But inside, there are so many archives and historic objects. There's a library of books from the Johnson Publishing Foundation, who set up Jet Magazine and Ebony Magazine. So thousands of books and sort of black life from, um, that were published from the 1940s, but they're everything from Ethiopian rock churches, mask, dance. And when I left, the artist who's called Theasta Gates, who saved the building from demolition, he said, oh, you should come back and do a show here. But I knew that I was responding to the, the objects and I started making a record in response to all these different pieces. I mean, you said that when you went in and saw all of this, you, you knew your life would never be the same again, which is quite a, a, a big statement to make. Tell me exactly why. What were the things that you saw that moved you, that created the music? I think the main thing for me was there was so much black history which I wasn't aware of. You know, I feel like I've been quite a good student of history, but there was just so much in here. There was such a wealth of black literature. There were all these things that I didn't know, or I'd see amazing photographs or hear about traveling fashion shows that happened all over America and feel this sense of uplift. I mean, the first single is New York Transit Queen, which is about the subway queens of the, the mid and late 40s, something I'd never heard of. It's essentially a pageant. Yes, yeah. D dedicated or devoted to the subway. But it was really the first, one of the first racially integrated pageants, celebrating a different kind of beauty away from the sort of all-American blonde girl. Well, it was amazing because I saw this photograph of Audrey Smaltz and she was hanging off the back of this fire engine wearing this bathing suit with this funny cheeky expression on her face and she's wearing fireman's boots rolled down. I'd seen lots of white models and actresses in this position but never a black woman so I was really excited to know who she was and found out all about her life. She's in her 80s now and she's had this incredible life and I found out Miss Transit was the black workers answer to Miss Subways and that Audrey Smoltz had won the competition. So when I wrote this song it turned out to be this punk song and it's like a two minute long punk song and we just made the video for it in New York. It's not what people expect, and is that what this album is about, in a way? I think it's really important as an artist to continue to open up and push yourself. And I felt, with responding to the objects in the Stony Island Arts Bank, that I was really able to keep that as my focus. Was there ever, in your mind, an element of risk about this? Or was the risk part of the excitement? I think there was a risk. I think when I first started making this record, I had it in my head as a side project. And I said to everyone I work with, oh, I'm just making a side project. I'm obsessed with this building, with all these objects, with all these stories. I felt so free to be able to do my own thing completely. And it was really only a few months ago, someone was saying, you know, this, this should just be your record. Wait. Going back to the objects that inspired this in the Arts Bank in Chicago, it hosts what, is, what are described as problematic um, artefacts from America's terrible history with racism. Some people argue, you know, they should be relegated to the past, they shouldn't be on display. What's your feeling about why they're important to see still? I think these objects are evidence. There are postcards depicting lynchings, um, which have their own story. The photo was taken, it took a long time to take those photos, to, to work with the flash 
to get the, the subject in. Someone has to print the photographs. A post office has to sell these postcards. A post, someone has to deliver them to someone's house. There has to be enough demand for them to be written on. And I re remember just thinking, what world is this that has produced this object for white amusement? And there's no shame around it. So it, the disconnect between this black suffering and this, um, the everyday use of these images was is part of the reason why I think these these things these objects need storing and ultimately speaks to your music in this album yes yeah I, I felt like I couldn't help but respond to these objects and so the songs are joyful and some of the songs are painful there are songs of resistance I feel like these stories need telling and I wanted to tell them in a beautiful way and that was really important for me Colin Bailey Ray thank you so much for talking to us